Hello, today we will discuss some signal timing design concepts from traffic engineering. The University of Idaho site um, explains how we can determine the optimal cycle length, which is the sum of all the face lengths, that means the amount of green, red, yellow, red given to each of the directions of traffic. Um, and it is explained pretty nicely in this website that um, to find the optimal cycle length, C0, you have to find the sum of lost time for all faces. That basically means all the yellows and all reds that are given to each of the directions. So basically you have the green, yellow, red, and yellow and red are basically lost time periods, um, you know, which kind of prevents traffic from going through. And you're trying to optimize the greens for each of the directions so that you will get the best uh, performance at that traffic intersection. So to determine this, you have to find the volumes of each of the directions and the capacity of those directions and then find the loss time that you're expecting. And you can do this uh, equation and figure out what the, uh, the cycle length would be. And generally it's found that the more loss time we have, the, uh, you know, the amount of delay will increase um, and it follows a curve like this you know so that and there are two directions you should remember so one is having a red the other is having a green so in most situations you have a curve like this so let's uh, look at how this can be analyzed using z cubes so let's keep this uh, particular graph in mind and um, in this you know we have drawn a picture of a intersection here and in this intersection, the eastbound and uh, westbound have, eastbound is obviously the more critical one. So let's just indicate the, the critical directions here. Um, this is the critical direction. So let me just uh, mark it here. And this is the critical direction going southbound because it's 200 versus in the northbound is only 30. And you can see the labels on the left. So each of these four um, tiny spreadsheets are showing the direction, the design flow, or the volume that you're designing for, the saturation flow, and the uh, ratio of the design flow and the saturation flow. So in southbound direction, you have 200 as the volume and 1,900 as the capacity, and the ratio is hence 0 0.1053. Likewise, the northbound is 30 um, vehicles per hour, and the capacity is 1,900 and hence the ratio is 0 0.0158. So the critical direction is the southbound because the uh, volume to capacity ratio is 0 0.1053 versus um, northbound, which is only 0 0.0158. So if you consider the eastbound and westbound, um, eastbound is the critical direction because it's 200 cars and the ratio is uh, 0 0.1053 versus westbound is 0 0.1015. So now how do you um, optimize the cycle length to handle this particular uh, amount of traffic and that's what we will look at next so these are the westbound eastbound and northbound traffic now let's go to the uh, calculation here that where we are connecting each of these um, these um, um, information given here to the appropriate uh, cell. So southbound is the volume to saturation ratio is 0 0.1052 as we have seen in the other tiny calci here. So that is 0 0.1053 which is um, referred here and northbound is given here, eastbound is given here and the westbound is given here. We are referring to those original spreadsheets by the way. And here is the integrating time for the southbound direction which is 9 seconds and eastbound is 10 seconds. And the critical flow ratio is going to be the maximum of these two, southbound and northbound together. So obviously the 0 0.10526 is governing this, and hence this is the critical flow ratio in the north and southbound direction. And east and westbound direction is again 0 0.1052 because those two directions, this is the maximum. So you can see that that's the maximum of those two values. The sum of integrating lengths is obviously nine plus 10, and sum of critical ratio is the sum of these two in both north-south and east-west directions. And op the optimal cycle length is calculated according to this 
um, equation 1.5 L plus 5 divided by 1 minus the sigma of V by S the volume to uh, saturation flow ratio or the uh, volume to capacity ratio so this equation is applied in this cell here so if you look at it it is 1.5 times b5 that's the integrated length plus 5 and divided by 1 minus b6 which is b6 which is the sum of critical ratio the v by v by saturation ratio and you get the optimal cycle length in general in practice we would correct this cycle length upward to the next nearest five seconds so it is we apply the ceiling function with five to get this and you can just press ctrl tilde here to see all the equations that we have and um, and how we have um, organized it now the interesting thing is that we can let me move this calci here so let's say that you wanted to see how the cycle length would change if we increase the westbound traffic so we can use the uh, capture function the in the capture tab we have the ability to change this value and you can change the value of the westbound as you can see that the westbound is changing here it is not yet making any difference because the eastbound is 200 and we are only changing from 0 to 100 so initially when you change this you get the ability to change from 0 to 100 but if you press shift it starts to change from 0 to 1000 so here you can see that I'm increasing the volume now to 680, which effectively increases my cycle length to 62 and hence 65 seconds. And if I increase the capacity, the volume even further, like 890, 920 and so forth, uh, the cycle length increases to 81 right now, as you can see here. Uh, and you could press control also to get even more range, like 8800 and 10,000 and so forth. So, um, Effectively, you have a way of getting to the cycle length uh, in an interactive um, calculation format using Calci, um, and uh, this demonstrates how uh, you know you can determine the value of the cycle length by changing different things. So this is obviously over capacity, so it's getting a negative cycle length. It means that uh, you know we have to do something else before it can start to work. So here's a demonstration of calculation elements the presentation ability of z cubes through zoomy as you can see here and the ability to paint as we were demonstrating here you could have you know for example drawn a circle or something you know just or maybe better get a bunch of cars here so you can you can put a bunch of cars or something like that you know so um, these are certain abilities of z cubes you can use to do you know engineering concepts like signal timing design concepts thanks for listening